Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at two different charge curves, a 20 to 80% charge curve and a 30 to 80% charge curve. Let's get into it. All right, so hopefully you've seen some of my other charge curve videos where I've done 10 to 80%. I've done a bunch of different tests for that uh, to compare different brands and models and temperatures and unplugging and replugging in. And the best session I've ever gotten charging time wise is about 36 to 37 minutes. And that uh, was at an Electrify America BTC, the new Gen 4 unit. And I did have to unplug and replug it. So I was wondering what would happen if maybe I didn't charge as long to see if it would A, still have the GM dip and overheat and B, how long would it take? So what I went ahead and did, I did a 20 to 80% and a 30 to 80% charge test. So the top left is gonna be the 20 to 80% and the top right is gonna be the 30 to 80% charge test. And let's just kind of see what happened and uh, gain some knowledge from these recordings. All right, so here we go. The footage kind of got messed up a little bit at the beginning, so that's why it kind of starts with a beautiful picture. And then here we are now, I have it all lined up for everyone so you know what's going on. In the bottom left hand, you can kind of see the timer for how long it's taking the charge session to go. In the upper right hand corner, you're gonna see the 30 to 80. It took 80% to add 20% to get to 50%. And on the upper left, we will have added 30% back in to get to 50% in 15 minutes. That's pretty good. Uh, we're moving along here at a pretty good pace. Uh, again, these were lined up from the start of the charge session, not necessarily like where the 30% starts at the 30% of the 20%. And now here we are, we're arriving at the end of the 30 to 80% charge session. And that took 27 minutes and four seconds for the 30 to 80%. Uh, and that added 50% and it took 27 minutes and 28 seconds to add the same amount of state of charge for the 20 to 80. And here it took 34 minutes and 45 seconds for the 20 to 80% session to add the uh, full amount. And that took an additional seven minutes and 17 seconds to add the additional 10% uh, compared to the 30 to 80% charge test. So pretty interesting results. They are pretty much almost exactly the same adding the 50%. Um, however, to, if you wanted to add 10 more percent and have uh, more workable energy on your trip, it will take you about seven minutes and 17 seconds. Now let's go ahead and look at the charge curve here so we can kind of look at the power uh, going into the car. So the red is the 20 to 80% uh, state of charge uh, charge session and the blue is the 30 to 80% uh, state of charge. Notice there is a temperature difference. The blue was in September at 72 degrees and the red was at 82 degrees. So it was a little bit warmer for the red. Uh, so I don't know if that led to the big drop, but I, I, don't, I don't think it was that big of a factor given the results we had. For the red session, you see it starts at about 147, works its way up to around 153, 154. And then there's a sharp drop off uh, after it has added about 13% state of charge. And then it kind of walks its way up to 110 and then has a nice uh, taper off, which actually looks like the beginning of the GM dip. If, if I'm being honest, that's what that looks like to me. Then when you look at the blue, there's actually this completely flat well, not flat, but completely linear um, decrease in energy, and that went the whole time, uh, and there was no notable GM dip. So when you charge for a shorter amount of time, it does help um, reduce the likelihood of the GM dip occurring. And I also wanna note, obviously this was pulling less power, so that uh, didn't allow for things to overheat. And then with the natural charge curve, which it kind of followed for the most part, then it didn't um, heat it up as well, and it was a nice linear, decline. Let's go ahead and look at one more charge curve before I kind of give you my final thoughts here. Here I have a bunch of different, I have from using a supercharger with a magic dock, and this is the V3 supercharger with a magic dock, and then I have the two sessions we did with the 2080, 30 to 80, and then I have my best session ever, uh, but that did include two uh, replugs because um, there's an issue with cable cooling, so then I changed sessions and then I felt um, 
it's starting to derate a little bit. And so then I switched again and I was able to get a pretty decent charge session. But again, this is going from percentage added zero to 50. And you can see that the best charging session ever. So if theoretically the card charge its best, it stays above both of those 20 to 80 and 30 to 80% charge tests. So if GM could fix the curve, um, we could have an even shorter adding of 50% to the car. And you know we could probably live in that 10 to 60% charging um, range. It's also worth noting that the going from uh, 10, it was 10 to 62. That's all I was able to kind of glean from that charge session. It took 24 minutes and eight seconds, which was three minutes uh, faster than the 20 to 80 uh, and 30 to 80% for the most part and adding back 50% state of charge to the battery. So again, that's just kind of confirming that we would save a little bit of time there if we had the best possible scenario. All right, so what does this mean for you? Why is this information useful? Well, I think it's probably best to live within like the, the 20 to 70, uh, you could go up to 80 if you wanted to, but I would say 20 to 70 or maybe even the 30 to 80. Uh, you'll get a nice consistent charging time every time. You'll be adding back 50%. You're gonna have, depending upon if you're 20 or 80, you're gonna have uh, a bunch of extra energy if you would need to go a little bit lower. A lot of people don't like to go below, honestly, 20%. So I think for this car, it actually kind of works out. If you just go to 20%, you have plenty of buffer, and then you're also not going to lose any time by having the battery overheat and then be waiting on the battery to overheat. Um, now, I do want to have one more thing. If you're like on a road trip and like you all take a long time at your stops and like you like to go and use the bathroom, eat, whatever, you know, it probably doesn't matter. You could let it go up to 80, that's fine. But this is, if, you're, if you are trying to optimize, you're trying to get to, you know, Disney World as fast as you can so that you can in, enjoy your time there, then I, I would live within the, the 20, you know, that, that like I said, that 20 to 70, 30 to 80 uh, kind of time frame of adding just 50% back. That's more than enough to get to the next charger and then you don't have to um, deal with that, that D rate. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Um, I, can you charge 10 to 80 every time? You can absolutely do that, but just know that that will add some time. Um, and especially the more and more you charge, obviously it's gonna add more and more time to your drive time. So it just really depends on you. But if you like to enjoy your time, then you can completely ignore everything I said in this video. Uh, but like I said, if you're looking to optimize, hope you find this information helpful. So that's all I have for today. If you haven't already, please remember to give a like and a subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will catch you all next time.